Hi again. So, this is the thing I was talking about. It's basically like a physics version of a guitar. It's got some spring scales here so you can measure tensions in the string. Most of the strings are broken. There's only one left. I think this thing is like thousands of years old. It's probably like 50 years old. Um, it was here before I got to Windsor. Um, it's got one creepy string left that makes kind of an annoying, not too pleasant sound, but it's a sound. Um, you could measure its length, you could tune it to a given tension, and back in the day you could probably twist these things which are all rusted and don't really move anymore, um, and you can play notes. So we could do this whole process a certain length, tension, I get a note, I get a fundamental note. I'm not sure what note this is, it doesn't really matter. What I want you to know is when you pluck a string, you can kind of hear it, I don't know if you can hear that. You can kind of hear it, I hold all this. You can hear it ring out. It doesn't sound computer generated. It sounds like a string. It has a stringy quality to it. Okay. That's because when you pluck a string, like just pluck it as opposed to shake it the way we were doing in class, when you just pluck it, you actually do something called sending it into vibration. And when you set the string into vibration, you're basically allowing it to vibrate in every possible way at once. And it turns out when you do that, the string will vibrate in a combination of all of its possible harmonic modes at once. And there's an infinite number of harmonic modes, so technically it's vibrating in an infinite number of ways at once, all superimposed on one another to make this like crazy shaped way that the string is vibrating. But the thing about that is that every single vibrational mode of the string is one of the harmonic modes that are allowed on the string. It's not going to naturally vibrate in ways that aren't it's in its harmonic modes. So when you pluck a string, it's not just, even though you hear primarily the fundamental, all of these vibrations are kind of simultaneously happening. And if you were to add them all up on a graph like we did in class with the two overlapping wave puzzles, you'd get the actual shape of the string at that moment. And in class, I'll show you some applets where you can actually do that. And this is called Fourier analysis, and it's a mathematical way of decomposing a complex vibration into, into smaller, simpler collections of sine waves, and that's what this really is. So um, the reason I want you to understand that is because there's certain properties. For example, the fundamental vibration only has nodes at the end. Okay? If you were to touch this in the middle, this, you're clamping the string at the middle, that's not part of the boundary conditions, you'd stop this vibration. But if you were to touch it at the middle, that actually wouldn't affect the second harmonic or the fourth harmonic because it has a note at the middle, so it's actually not vibrating at that moment. So by touching a string after you pluck it lightly at the middle, you actually can die away the odd harmonics and just leave the even ones that all have notes at the middle behind which is cool, and that's how people play harmonics on a guitar. Now, of those remaining even harmonics, this is going to be the loudest one and the one you primarily hear, because it's just the lowest harmonic that plays is usually the one that dominates the sound. Whereas if I touched it a third of the way or two-thirds of the way, I'd actually eliminate all of these harmonics and only hear some odd harmonics, particularly the third harmonic. So I can, I can pluck the string, set all these going, damp it out here or here lightly with my finger if you touch it just precisely at the right spot, and I can wind up with hearing just the third harmonic ring out at the end. And finally, if I touch it a quarter or three quarters of the way down, I eliminate the second and I'll hear the fourth harmonic, which should be two octaves above the fundamental. And when you listen to a guitar after you've heard the harmonics, you hear it in the tone when you just play it. You hear those little higher order ringing sounds, and that's what makes it sound beautiful, as opposed to like a computer-generated beep when you hear it. So, if I were to do our little dance, which I'll come over here and do really quickly. If you remember, the fundamental went like this, the second harmonic went like this, third harmonic went like this, and the fourth harmonic went like this. Please don't put this on Facebook, okay? Um, <clears throat> really what happens when you pluck the string is it's doing this, and this, and this, and this all at once and some like crazy wiggle that really is a combination of all of the harmonic frequencies and you could think of the guitar string as just a combination of the harmonic frequencies. So the last thing I want to show you is how those harmonic frequencies get damped out and I noticed that my uh, I noticed that there's a little bit of vibration that's happening in here from these metal pieces so I'm going to try to get rid of that make it sound a little better. So there's my guitar string. Right here, halfway, is that midpoint that if I touch it and pluck it, 
I should hear just the second harmonic and I can avoid the first. So let me see if I could touch it lightly. Still pluck the string so that both sides are vibrating. I'm not touching it so that I clamp it and only this side vibrates. I'm going to touch it so that the whole string still vibrates, but it's ringing out. I've eliminated the fundamental. See if you can hear. Here's the fundamental. You can even hear it just ring out there. Now listen. Also hear a little bit of the fourth harmonic, which is the octave above that, but that's def that's the second harmonic. If I touch it a third of the way down, I'll hear what's called the fifth of the scale. I could touch it here or here. I could also hear it if I touch it here. So I just touched it here and here and got this vibration, but eliminated those two. And then finally at the quarter should be able to do it here. Or here. Oops, sorry. That one's a little hard to do with my left hand. Places you could touch it, like on a third, the major thirds. They're all just different harmonics of the guitar string where you're damping it out so only that one single harmonic vibrates. So that's pretty much our lesson on harmonics for now. Um, when we have class on Friday, hopefully, because I doubt we're going to have class on Thursday, um, I will show you the vibrating string with the strobe lights. You can really see this and come and touch the nose, and it's really cool. And I'll also have the guitar here, so we can really look at how the harmonics work, and maybe a few of our guitar players can demonstrate for us. So I hope you enjoy your snow day. Um, there's reading tonight in the book, which is a little bit about sound. Um, there's one super fun thing that you can try if you want. Um, what I'd like you to try at home after you read a little bit of, for the reading that's in the book, there's reading and problems. So if you didn't do this assignment, you should do this assignment, okay? Watch the solutions for this assignment and review them. Do the reading in the syllabus for Wednesday night, do Thursday, okay? And actually, do the reading in the syllabus for tonight, do tomorrow, okay? That reading is on sound. And then seeing how things go, um, you'll have we'll decide, I'll maybe post something else to Moodle and we can decide if you're going to have um, any homework for Wednesday night to Thursday. So please check your email from me. Okay, so I might give you an assignment to do Wednesday night to Thursday as well. Um, I didn't look at the syllabus. I can't remember if it's reading or supposed to be a worksheet. I think it's supposed to be a worksheet. I don't think we'll be ready for it. Um, so do the reading that's assigned for tonight carefully. Answer the questions carefully. Review this assignment so you come in feeling solid about this, and then we'll just pick it up where, where we have to. And I might send you a few things to get you thinking about Thursday's class, mostly just animations and stuff that you can watch online. Um, the thing I want you to try at home, which is super amazing to do, has to do with how sound waves travel differently through different media. For example, if you put your head on a desk, knock on the desk, it sounds very different than when you knock on the desk and listen to it in air. If you ever heard yourself talking on a voicemail or something, you sound totally different than when you hear it in your own head. The voice in your own head, the sound travels through the bones in your head. You see your voice sounds much deeper than it does out in the air when it travels, where you lose some of the lower frequency components of your voice. So the way you sound to other, like on an answering machine, is actually the way you sound to other people, and the way you sound in your own head is a little bit more robust. I don't know if that makes you happy or not, but I like my head voice better than my real voice very, very much. Um, one thing that's fun to do about that is to take a metal hanger. It can be either the kind that has the metal bottom or the kind that has the cardboard bottom. If it has the cardboard bottom, just take it off so that it doesn't have the bottom. If it has the metal bottom, you can just leave it, okay? Tie two pieces of string to either end. Turn it upside down. I wish I had one here to show you. Pretend this is the hanger. It actually will work with any metal object. You could do it with like a serving spoon or a large fork or something like that. It's actually crazy if you do it with a large fork if you don't have a hanger, okay? Um, you wanna tie string to the thing on both sides. Do that. You could even do it with a 
scissor, but it has to be the object has to be all made of metal. That's the trick. Okay? And just use any string. I happen to be using fancy string and I'm not cutting it long enough. Actually, I'm not even showing how to do it. Take the two pieces of string, okay? Wrap them around your finger. So like loop one piece around your finger and loop the other end around your finger. So the hanger's hanging low. Put your fingers in your ears, okay? And then whack the hanger into something and listen to the sound that it makes. It will blow your mind. It's one of the craziest, craziest, craziest things you will ever try. So just to, oh, I can show you this. So hang something from the tray that's metal, both sides, one, two. There. Separate it out so it's at the both ends if you're using something like a spoon. Wrap the strings around your finger, stick your fingers in your ear, and whack the thing. It's even working with this, which is really cool. Whack it against something. That's what I want you to do before you come back to class. It'll be really fun. People will think you're weird, but I know you'll enjoy it. Enjoy your snow day. Hope you don't, hopefully you don't work too hard to get a little extra sleep and get to play outside, and I'll see you on Thursday.